Hey guys, I'm on here from Manalasis. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. On today's episode, I'm gonna talk about the top five mistakes for plant beginners. I always um, encourage people to try to grow plants, but always I understand that mistake is inevitable. So making mistake is fine. It's just that. I'm hoping by this video, I can actually inspire you guys to grow plants and also if I share these mistakes, you guys can be able to avoid it. In this video, I'm going to simplify into 5 W of the mistakes and uh, from this 5 W, I will try to dissect into the different circumstances and also the subject so that we can understand the really common mistake for plant beginners. But the 5 W is actually a term that I invented for this specific video. So the 5 W, I call it who, where, what, when, and why. So I know it sounds like a marketing technique, but of course it's easy for us to understand the overall of the message that I'm trying to convey in this uh, video. So the first one is gonna be who. Cool. So the really common mistakes that we have been done buying plants because of our ignorance. No offense, of course we buy plants because uh, when we go to the nursery, we see the beautiful plants and we want to grab them home immediately. It's really common, I think it's fine, you know, that's the reason why we fall in love with plants. But of course, it's really imperative that we have to understand who is the plant that we brought back home. For example, uh, if you buy a plant that from a nursery without knowing what's the plant species is it, who is it, that means that it's inevitably we will fall into the category of giving wrong caring guide for the specific plants. Eventually, we end up killing them and also we give up, you know, we lose our hope, got no more confidence and also the reason why we quit gardening. So it's really important for us to do a research before we get in a plants or after we get a plants. So when you go into the nursery, you can actually also always ask the owner of the plants um, nursery. You can ask him, what plant is that? Can I know what's the species name? Or it's really easy. Take a picture post it on Instagram, look for help, or you can always reach me out you know, in my Instagram and ask me what plant species that you have in your hand. So once you have the context of who, who is the plants that you're getting back home, so it's really simple for us to understand where to go them. So it comes to the point number two is where. So it's really important to understand where do you want to grow a plant. Like I said, if you're getting the plants needs a lot of light so that you can process photosynthesis, for example, if you're getting a ficus slirata, you can't put the plants in toilet, right? It needs full sun to thrive. If you are getting a plant that is actually an aeroid plant, like anthuriums, you can't grow the plants under full sun conditions, right? You gotta kill them. So it's really important for us to understand what plants we have first. I mean, the who, we can study about their environment, also their native um, conditions, so we can provide the good care. Usually people make a mistake by growing the plants in toilet. This is the common mistake that all the plant beginners make because they will always bring back the plants and just grow, grow them in the toilet because they think toilet is the best place to grow plants because it's high humidity. That's always, always the common mistake the plant beginner makes, including me. If you are having an anthurium, you know that anthuriums are plants that is actually quite fussy in humidity. You will have to grow them indoor and also they are quite finicky about temperature to make sure you have a conducive condition for them to grow. So if you have a plant that is more picky on sunlight, for example, ficus larata, you can be able to grow the plants in a car porch or balcony so that they can actually receive the optimal conditions of light to grow well and to thrive under your care. So if you have an alocasia, for example, they are not really um, fussy about light conditions. Of course, they will grow well under bright light. You can grow them indoor but try to move them close to the window as much as possible. So this is the conditions that we have to understand where to grow them. But of course, all the plant need lights to grow well. So if you don't have any window nearby in the room, like I said, you can check out another episode of mine, how to use a grow light to grow plants. You can use um, grow lights to support your plants in your house, also in your living room to grow them well. When we understand who's the plant that you bring back home, where to grow them, so we come to the third point is, what kind of soil mix that we have to use to grow the plants that you have and where to place them. So the common mistake the plant beginner makes buying the plants home is that they will always forgot to check the soil that they get from. If you really buy plants from a normal nursery, usually you will see they grow most of the plants in pure peat-based uh, materials such as cocoa peat or peat moss. 
So if you place them near to a place that has intensive of light, right? You did not change the soil mix, it's fine. You water them, the water evaporates faster and also the plants will absorb the nutrients and also moisture from the soil media. But if you move them indoor where the light is actually insufficient, you water them too often, it will encourage fruit rot and then they die. So it's really crucial for plant beginner to understand also to identify the soil mix that you get from the nursery. It's suitable to go in the place that you grow. So I will demonstrate what is the best soil and the good soil. Like I said, usually when we get the plants from a nursery, they will not change the good media for us. Therefore, it's really important for plant beginner to identify what kind of soil mix that you have in your plants. So for example, this is pure peat moss. I will try to water the plants just like you can see. The water drain out faster, but you can see the textures of the potting media is in a clump, which means there's no any gap for the water to flow through and also it's really bad for the root system to develop and also the aeration of the potting media is quite bad so that it will suffocate the root system, especially it retains too many moistures in the pot. Therefore, the roots will rot. If you're using this one, it's a chunky material potting mix from the plant doctors. If you water the plants, you can see the water will drain out immediately. And also you can see the amendment inside there will let the water flow through and it will retain enough moisture for the plants to absorb the nutrients and also moisture. You know, using transparent pot is a good idea for you to observe the development of the root and also to identify the bad soil and the good soil. So a plant beginner will have to understand what kind of soil mix that you have to use to grow the plants that you have in your house. So we talk about our first point is who, second one will be where to grow the plants, the third one is what soil mix we have to use. Now we come to number fourth of W, it's when to watering. Based on the soil mix that you have, you will have to determine when to water them. So it's actually fine if you don't want to repot the plants because normally people will encourage you to bring back the plants to let it acclimatize the condition in your house first then you only do the reporting because by reporting the plants you are actually creating a shock transplanting them, especially plants right, will actually destroy a little bit of their root system it will make them feel um, stress, you know, stress out so transplanting is actually not really encouraged for plant beginners it's fine if you don't want to report the plants that's why it's really important for you to identify what soil mix you have and you have to know when to water with them. So like I said, if you really have a chunky soil media, right? It's really imperative for you to water them quite frequently based on the circumstances that you have. If you got the who the plants correctly, if you're growing uh, a location, get them a chunky mix, you grow them right beside the window. Therefore, you have to make sure that to water them quite frequent. So when to water them is really important. For plant beginners, if you don't have no idea when to water, just tuck your finger into the soil mix and feel the moisture. You can see there's something stick onto your hand means that the soil mix is actually quite moist. Means that you can wait for another two or three more days to water them. Or you can get a transparent pot. Therefore you can see the moisture inside there. Means that the, the soil media is still moist. You can actually wait for another few more days to water them. This one, like I said, if I tuck my finger into it, you can see it will absorb a lot, a lot of moisture. It's like a sponge. So you have to know that if you're using this soil mix, you can actually prolong the watering frequency. For example, if you touch it, it's still moist. You'll wait another few more days. Touch it, it's still moist. Wait another few more days. Wait until the top few inch of the soil is dry, then you water them. I'm not really encouraging you to use this soil mix because uh, if a plant beginner doesn't know what to do with this kind of soil mix, right, you will easily kill the plants. So therefore, it's really understand who's the plant you're growing, where you grow them, what soil mix you use, and the last we'll see, when to water them. So comes to the last point is the last W, it's why. If you know the plants that you're getting, like I say, who is the plant that you bring it back home, where to grow them, and also what the soil media you use, when to watering them and also the last if you provide all the circumstances right and also the contact is correct for them to grow in the right conditions it's really important for you to understand why we have to fertilize them so a lot of people asking me that um, fertilizing is always a part and so the nutrients that primary for the plants to grow is actually not 
the primary source of nutrients, also energy for plants, is actually light. Light is really important. Light is the primary source of energy the plants can actually get for them to produce glucose, which means it's their food. So how do they produce glucose? They will uptake the nutrients from the soil and process for photosynthesis in their leaf to create energy, which means the glucose store in their stem so that they can grow, push out new leaf. Understand all the reason behind, provide them the right context to grow, right circumstances, then we only have to fertilize them. For plant beginners, we always doesn't know what kind of fertilizer we have to use. We are always open for those you know, organic soy fertilizer that we can get from the nursery, chicken manual, cow manual, but I not really encourage you to do that because it sometimes it is really concentrated. It might kill the plants if you over fertilize them or you will use a lot of concentrated or chemical compound fertilizer. It's not to say they are bad, it's just that plant beginner doesn't know what's the exact ratio that you have to dilute to feed for your plants. So it's safer for beginner to use some control release fertilizer. The trick is simple, just twist it open, sprinkle it into the soil, and also the coated nutrients, right? I mean, the whiter coats will slowly release and gradually release the nutrients to the plants when it's in contact with water. Hence, it is more easier and safer for beginners to use. You won't kill your plants easily and burn their root system. All right, let me give you some examples of how to use the 5W to grow the plants that you have. If I'm having these anthuriums from a nursery, normally what I will do is, who is this plant and where should I grow it? what soils I should use for this plant and when to water them and why I have to feed them. So, get at home, do some homework or you can ask the nursery owner. Once I do the research, I understand that Anthurium crystallinum are from South America where therefore they are preferred in a more uh, conducive environment such as uh, more cooling temperature and you understand that you live in Malaysia. Cooling temperature is impossible in outdoors hence I bring them indoor in my IKEA cabinets to provide them the right place to grow. So I already know who is this, and I will grow them in the IKEA cabinet with the conducive temperature and also the humidity. And I will use the soil mix that is dedicated for them from the Plant Doctor Magical Aroy Mix, which is porous, because they are epiphyte plants, which I study from what they are and also from the endemic species. And the last is, once I already got everything right, I know that I will have to water them quite frequent because the soil is porous. And when they're pushing out new leaf, means that they are growing really fine under my care. I will using some control release fertilizer or metaphorium seaweed fertilizer to grow them well. So this is all the simple case study that I've been trying to let you guys understand also for plant beginner to avoid all the mistakes that we have done previously. So by this video, I hopefully can inspire you guys to grow plants easily and to also let you guys understand that all these mistakes are actually avoidable if you understand all the 5W. So that's all for today guys and I hope you liked the video and also I hope this episode is actually useful for you to grow the plants that you have in your house. And if you really like the videos, please share with your friends and family. Drop a comment in the comment box below if you want to see anything new in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and that's all. Bye bye!